Okay, hi, we are live and I'm waiting for some people to log on. Buenos dias, good morning. I am actually having water and pretending to be coffee. <laughs> um, I kind of had a big breakfast and I don't think I can finish a cup of coffee. Hi, Sulema, thank you for tuning in. So I'm still waiting for some people to log in. Um, I guess I will just kind of start talking about describing what cafecito time is going to be about. I am so excited to be pairing up with some amazing women um, who will be doing cafecito time with me and I'll be announcing who they are towards the end of my video. So today I'm basically going to be talking a little bit about myself, who I am, what Official Latina is about, um, also known as latinajd.com. That, that was our original um, name and how we started. Um, so I'm Cindy, and I know that we have a lot of followers. We are past the 15,000 mark of individuals. Hi, Erica. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty incredible to me that so many people follow us and that we have your support. and that you guys are engaging with us. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I, uh, Latina uh, actually started with me just mentoring some students. So that was really cool. And it was really exciting to see how our group started growing. Um, but I'm originally, let's, let's backtrack and get back to a little bit who I am and um, how it all came to be. I'm, I am from El Salvador. And I came here when I was nine years old. I'm on TPS. Um, some of you may have heard my TED TEDx talk um, back uh, that I did it in November, and they came out in February this this year. Um, so that kind of describes a little bit of who I am while we ended up coming here. But um, I've been I grew up in Indiana, which is a very different state. I'm currently in Vancouver, Washington. And it was a very different state. Um, and going to law school was just my dream. But oh, it looks like we were having technical problems there for a second. Um, anyways, it, it was so completely different than anything I've experienced before. Um, law school had a lot of challenges as a person of color, as a person who's a first generation, and as a woman, there's a lot of challenges and obstacles to even get in-state tuition. Um, I kind of talk about that in my bio, um, and what I mean by that is that in the state of Indiana, they have made it really impossible for Latinos to get in-state tuition, um, and they're still fighting for it. Follow Undocumented Youth Alliance if you can, uh, if you're from Indiana or in that area. Support them and what they're doing. Um, and to being on TPS, a lot of people didn't know what I was, um, so... I ended up going part-time. That was the only way that I could afford it because I couldn't get a lot of scholarships due to my status. And with seeing how much I struggled and so many other obstacles that just... I mean, it felt like I was just being targeted <laughs> by life in general. <laughs> some of the struggles I had to overcome while in law school. And it, it, everything seemed to be going just bad by the time I was able to mentor some students it was just amazing um to be able to start seeing our community grow as Latina so I started um mentoring then we started designing everything for Latina then I worked my butt off on our website as you can see that I've put a lot of time and effort um and what it is today and then I started talking to more Latinas who just wanted to be a part of our community and I thought oh my gosh this is just beyond you know a merchandise store that I dreamed about as well there's so much more I want to do and I really hope that I can do that in my lifetime and that it will live on it will pass on to future generations and that's really my dream to see Latina grow, um, not just with me, but hopefully joining other team members. Um, it looks like 
having poor connection for some reason. Um, and just being able to make it thrive and passing passing this on to future generations. Um, and that's a little bit about myself with Latina. Now, Latina, our mission is to make Latinx visible. What that means is making a platform for others to tell their story. And when I say tell their story, I love when people are genuine and tell it like it is. I know that some people are hesitant there um, because they're very, very, uh, per they like to keep things, you know, to themselves or struggles and it's very private. Um, but the, here's the thing, a lot of people in our community, they feel alone and they might not have heard somebody else in their shoes. And I think that's why Latina is very different. I really love, you know, making sure that people can tell their story, open up, and then another person to read it and say, wow, I am not alone in this. So that's how Latina stories kind of got started. Oh, hi. No sugar in my tea. Well, I don't like sugar in my tea either. I like honey. So <laughs> anyways, um, so when I started reading some of the future stories, my gosh, you guys have blown me away with how you guys share your stories, the things that your parents have done and how, where the things that you have done to get where you are. It's incredible to see a community like that. And I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Um, and it's really cool to also see that mentorships are being built. If you, uh, it's not an official thing that I do um, just because of time, but I hope that one day we'll make it official. Um, if someone's looking for a mentor and if I'm able to have to find a contact that looks like they're gonna make a good connection. I try to reach out and make sure that they actually get together, that they text each other. Um, I try to check up on that connection later. It's been really cool to see that a lot of people step up and they wanna give back to the community. And so that has been just, um, just in awe how much a community wants to give back. And I really appreciate that. Um, and then I really have fun at the same time with making some of the merchandise. I know that our, my designs are getting better and better. It's something that I just really love doing um, for us. Oh, well then, I'm showing you guys our storage closet. Oops. <laughs> what did I do? Well then, <laughs> you guys saw my mess. I guess that happens with her saying hi to everyone i didn't know that that ha would happen <laughs> anyways um what was i talking about um i'm so sorry i'm just like embarrassed that that, <laughs> that showed up on video um anyways i was talking about mentoring mentorships and building those mentorships um and uh how it's been just great seeing that develop um, and I do, if you haven't told your story, I would love to hear, I would love to have you featured. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, it's in merchandise. Yes. Uh, empowerment. I wanted to wear something proud. I love wearing my favorite, uh, Senorita JD shirt. It's just so cool to wear around and people are like, what is that? What does that mean? Some people don't expect to see someone short brown <laughs> like me uh, with a Juris Doctorate or that I'm able to analyze things and how much knowledge I've gained over time and I really I think that's just so cool you know when I meet someone and they're like oh, from you know Latino and they're like oh you're Salvadorian and they see like I'm Salvadorian and it's it's just such an amazing connection. That's why I really loved working in immigration law um, when I would meet someone and they just couldn't believe it. Like, and I I couldn't believe how they were reacting. It was just a beautiful opportunity to be able to uh, talk them through an issue to help them. And so uh, that's kind of where um, the idea of community uh, came, uh, just in, in that engagement. And hi to Jera's. Doc Tree, 
and Andrea Exo Felicia. Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm so excited we have 12 people so far. Anyways, I'm talking a little bit about my, myself for those who are just joining in. Um, and I'll be posting our recordings for our upcoming guests, which I'll announce later uh, after once we're kind of going through our time. We have about another 20 minutes. Um, and I guess the next things I want to talk about is my experience through law school. I I know I have recorded a few ladies from my law school who are just amazing and supporting what Latina is about. And they were so kind to share their story and what what they've experienced through law school. And they're very law school and they're very just so open. And I really appreciated that. And I have not sat on the blue couch. We don't have the blue couch anymore. But that was my blue couch because I, I don't know if you can tell from the website. But I have three favorite colors, which is gold, teal, and white. Those are my favorite colors. And we haven't had the uh, 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 some interviews um, for some time because I was moving across the U.S., um, so if you are interested in, in interviewing with me or joining me for cafecito time as a, um, as a, as a guest, we can do that as well. And these will be recorded and we'll post them on YouTube. So anyone who's missed it, you know, it'll be there. Although I really hope that you'll join us live so you can interact and ask questions, um, to us. So... Anyhow, uh, I'm going to go through to some of the things I've experienced in law school, some of the legal experiences I've had. You guys can you know, ask a question. Uh, feel free. Um, if time permits, then I'm going to go ahead and actually ask you if you want to call in and just say hello. And if you have any questions, you can do that. So I saw Latina Magazine do that and I called in. Uh, the other day and I actually got to talk to a celebrity ha hairstylist, which is like completely random But I got to be on there, you know, it was pretty cool, you know And then they replied to the story and I thought or Latina magazine replied to the story and I thought wow We're you know gotta get on their radar, you know, so that more people can find out about us. So anyways, uh, I started with working for Indiana University uh, in Indianapolis as a program assistant, but then how I made that switch, which is because we, we were in law school, I applied for some jobs and I got my first job with Mr. Jason Flora. And he's in Indianapolis, he's an amazing immigration attorney. This is not him telling me to say that, but he is an amazing immigration attorney. If you like immigration law, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, immigration is just, passion because it's, it, it hits so close to home but it also means that it comes with a lot of responsibility and knowing that people's lives are at stake and I love when I'm able to make someone's life easier and it's also very hard when um, you're not able to do much for them so I started working with him in 20, uh, 2015 that summer Oh my gosh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years now. And I so I started working with him and doing a lot of immigration court. I mean, that is fast paced. If you're an immigration court attorney, I applaud you. Like for me, I would love to do it. It just takes a lot out of you because it's such a very hard system that we're dealing with. And then I've, uh, I ended up working for the attorney general's office. And that was really interesting because I did a lot of research. I did a survey on um, uh, tra human trafficking. And that survey on human trafficking was how laws are protecting or not protecting victims of trafficking um, and what justice is being brought. So that was really interesting. Um, and. I I think it really helped analyze the legislation, the legislative law, which is really what my what my dream is to do. It. Oh, that's probably a plug in right there. If you are in a position to help me find a legislative job somehow, it's kind of hard because I'm in Vancouver, Washington, and not in Seattle, and not in down in Salem. <laughs> but I really would love to work in that. Um, anyhow, I that was one of my my favorite things to do because it made me really think outside the box. 
um, things that we don't often see um, and how to protect our youth and how to protect our women and children um, and actually men. A lot of men fall into human trafficking as well. Um, so I did that work and then after that I started working for the Farm Workers Law Center and this is one of my favorite things to talk about. If you're a law student and you're considering working for uh, doing some type of nonprofit work and you have the ability to help out in a farm worker law center, um, each state has their own, it's, it's federally funded, um, you should do it. And the only, the reason I say that is because it get, it gets you out of your comfort zone in so many different ways. First of all, it was just me and three other law students covering the whole state of Indiana, which is seems like a lot, and it is a lot, and I think there should be more funding for those programs like that, especially so for more vulnerable people who are amazing farm workers and they deserve so much more than they're, they're getting. Um, and they're our heroes right now. You know, they're keeping our our country fed and afloat. And so the Farm Workers Law Center, what they do is that they have the ability to be able to go to housing areas in the country for farm workers that are either um, undocumented, um, but, um, H-1B and H, sorry, H-2B visas and H-2A visas, um, not just farm workers, but any worker, usually you can go in there and talk to them about their legal rights. And that was one of my favorite things to do because there's such a vulnerable population and I could bring some hope to them. Um, even just a law student putting, putting out pamphlets and talking to them about their rights or things were, but it was one of the most challenging things because it was just me paired up with another um, girl who she didn't speak Spanish a whole lot so it was a lot of interpreting but I was just happy that she was there to help and willing to try and the, uh, she ended up moving to Chile and getting married so shout out to Bianca if she ever watches this one um, and we ended up um, going around the state giving out pamphlets talking about uh, human trafficking talking about um, circumstances of even possible slavery if someone's undocumented sometimes they're they're most susceptible to abuse so that's what we did um we knocked on a lot of doors just to introduce ourselves and it's interesting that i was never scared of um going up to a door it felt weird at first i was just excited to be doing it i think the one thing i was more scared about is when in the state of indiana you will see confederate flags a lot of um kkk live in some of those close off areas so that was just very interesting um uh, very scary um a lot of times of not even getting out of the car until we reach good enough close enough proximity to get close to the houses so that was interesting if you guys are considering that i know it's very different i know that seems like wow um getting out of that comfort zone but if those people really need it. Um, they are, are part of our community and they have made me feel like being so close to home because my grandfather was a farm worker. Um, and I know that we, a lot of us come from families that grew up in farms in our country. So I highly, I highly suggest working for a farm worker law center, uh, um, uh, organization in your state. Um, another experience I've had that I would like to, so after that, I work for Indiana Legal Services. So, um, I was really grateful. Oh, hello to Four Corners Depot. Um, I was really grateful that I could find a position working for a federally funded organization, still a nonprofit, um, because as a law student, you if you're especially working full time, um, you don't often have the ability to find paying jobs. Um, sometimes the people just want you to do an externship. Um, I had no choice. I needed to make money. So I ended up working for, for the Indiana Legal Services and I had a 401k, which was pretty cool. I never had that before. Um, I had healthcare. I was so grateful for healthcare. And I had flexible hours and by what I mean is that they knew I was a law student. So they knew that I went to school at night 
and they were so incredibly kind that I would go to school, come back, and they would still allow me, um, excuse me, go to work in the morning, I'd go to school, and come back if I needed to, if I didn't finish my hours. And I would take calls from stu- from people. So I was basically a call center individual. And, but um, because I have my law school background, I was able to analyze problems and problem spot and write it in a way that the uh, attorneys could figure out what a person's need was. So that was really just an interesting um, job to have. And, and one that will allow me to, to to practice my analytical skills to have health insurance and and get paid and be be able for me to afford my living situation in law school and so that was really cool if you guys like i said have any questions those tuning in please feel free to ask questions and i will try my best to answer them if not i like i always say i will do my best to find someone that can answer them um so anyhow i ended up give me let me have a cup of my water here a sip of my water, excuse me. Um, after that, and I, I, I thankfully I had an opportunity to do a lot of um, lot legal internships and getting paid. Um, and after that, I had the opportunity to work for a Utah in Washington D.C. with the fellowship, a Freeborn fellow fellowship, and the International Human Rights Program um, in Washington D.C. I was there for eleven weeks. There was a lot of challenges <laughs> there. Um, there was a lot of uh, life changes that had happened. Um, I don't usually talk too much about it, um, but when I was in law school, I, I, I'm a survivor of domestic violence by another law student. I obviously can't disclose much information uh, just because of our field, but um, I had a lot going on. And a lot of the times, I felt that uh, this person had made me believe I couldn't. Um, uh, so, oh, cool. Someone was in Ayuda as a well at one point. Awesome. Anyways, um, it, it there was a lot of changes, and I didn't get to had, you know help a lot of clients, but at the same time, it was just very difficult as a law student to go through that because in the background. I had to go through police interviewing, law school in- interviewing, Title IX hearing, court hearing, protective order he- hearing. It was just a lot um, while working full time, while being involved as a leader in our community. And um, that was very difficult. But I also made me realize in how many ways I could help people, uh, victims of crimes. So working in Washington, D.C. was just very amazing to help families and children and open my eyes and how the Latino population and other bigger states than Indiana, than Indianapolis, how they interacted, how they networked, how they supported each other. That was just very different for me. So sometimes I would make comments about the legal field and how whitewashed I think it is. And and it is um, because we're very small percentage of us are um, graduates and uh, attorneys, but um, the the main I issue uh, that I talk about is the how much is just, uh, racism there is uh, even within the law schools um, and our colleagues, and I know that a lot of times it doesn't feel like we're being supported um, much and. I have had people from uh, California who have expressed that they didn't feel the same way. And But the thing is, Indiana is a whole different, and even just the Midwest in general, not just Indiana, is a whole different culture. And Latinos, we don't often have the ability to meet other people like us. And if we do, unfortunately, sometimes I have experienced a lot of um, wanting to be the only one. And I didn't want to do that. So I, I wanted to make sure I could help others. I, I'm not here to view somebody else as my competition, but as an ally that I can work with. And that was just really important to me. So um, working in a U that can open my eyes in what other ways um, cities grow, what are things you can do for the community, and thinking outside the, the box. Um, so 
Um, I have a comment here. Hell yes, I agree. Racism is rooted deep in the United States. I was stationed in Oklahoma and experienced it firsthand. Yeah, yeah. And I grew up with that. And especially in Southern Indiana, it has changed. I'm going to tell you that because I did my TEDx talk and I was just, just blown away in how a lot of people have opened up their hearts and their minds. And um, that was very different. But I grew up with it being followed at... In the store, it's common being yelled at um, or hate crimes committed against me and my family. It happened a lot. My dad almost died by police brutality. I try to mention that in my TEDx talk. Um, I published the actual speech. If you guys want to go ahead and read it, read my story on there. But I was so nervous during a TEDx talk and I cried <laughs> because I was I was ta about to tell just at all and why it was important to share a story. So. With that being said, I didn't really get to, you know, disclose much in that time. And how I have a few more things. Absolutely. Some comments here. Absolutely. I'm from California. I'm moving to the Midwest. This is so true. Even in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I have some hello. What advice would you give to someone preparing for law school? What should I be doing right now over the next four months before I start law school in order to be prepared to prepare my, myself best? Good question. Um, I... Um, went to law school to in, to be in the daytime program. That's what I wanted to be. And I envisioned myself coming in and starting in the daytime program. And I am only saying this because it'll relate to what I did that summer. Um, I was working as a, uh, a program director for a nonprofit before I started law school. And I didn't know exactly what to do. Um, but because I couldn't afford to go uh, to, to the daytime program, I ended up doing the nighttime program. And and they had an option to do a class to sit in and um, basically just take the class and how to study for law school. I thought it was so important. I, th I think my law school still is doing it, Indiana University McKinney School of Law. Um, if you are able to see if they maybe have a class or maybe it's a class you can sit in for the summer to just kind of see how it goes, that kind of helped with the nerves of how I was feeling and taking a real class. It helped also analyze cases and it just really made me feel that I could go in knowing what I'm supposed to do. Granted, I got a, I think I got a B in that class and I'm the person that I love to get A's. And I was just really, really sad <laughs> that um, I didn't get an A. And it was just, uh, you know, law school's a different, I always say it's a different monster, um, way different. And I've always been an overachiever. So that was really hard. Um, so see if they have like something that you can sit in, if you've already done that, even just like listening to the content, um, seeing how other law students take notes. Uh, if you already know what school, you know, it looks like you already know what school you're going to. Hello to Roxanne Govari. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us. I'm talking about uh, law school, uh, what to do the summer before. Um, I also took the time to see what my descriptions of the courses I would be taking were. Um, that was really helpful so that I can go in knowing what to expect. Um, I know that for me, I just worked a lot and I drove three hours, um, I think every three days or so to my law school so I could take that class. And it was, the class didn't you know exactly prepare me for everything in law school, but it was, gave me an intro. Um, if you have the ability to find a tutor or a law student in that, in the law school to give you some um, show you how they take notes, show you how they study. Uh, you know, you're going to find something that I hate hearing myself say this, something that works for you because, uh, th yeah, they, they, um, you will find, uh, something that works for you. When I mean that's that how you study, how you memorize. I see that attorneys and heel says learn to outline and I go hundred percent agree. Learning to outline is so important, and there is a way to outline in law school. Learn to see if someone can teach you how to do that. Um, I'm, well, I, I can do that as well. I can help you with that. 
um, even just give you some of my outlines as well. Um, drop your um, email in my inbox um, after this so that way I can uh, get to you. And seeing what those outlines look like is important. I know that I got overwhelmed my first year in seeing that how much we needed to read, how much, um, so many supplements there were out there. I was just really overwhelmed as a first generation student and I didn't have the money to buy those things. So I didn't know where to go. I, I ended up, um, and I talk about this um, because it's so important to know, I didn't know how to study in law school at all because I was so used to studying enough that I could um I could do well in school that I um did I got in, I was in academic probation and then the following semester I got mostly A's then I ended up just just going up in in a way but that first semester it kind of just was really hard <laughs> because I didn't know what to do. So I ended up getting books, uh, borrowing books from the library, borrowing resources um, from the academic um, assistant person in my law school, try to find uh, that type of help. Um, I um, ended up learning how to outline, learning what resources mattered, which ones didn't. And I found myself that a lot of the times uh, you needed to know black letter law. Um, you have to know it. And that just kind of made studying easier. I think I would love to either have someone talk about how to study for law school or I can just do a blog about it. I've been meaning to do that. Um, so I hope that will be helpful. I have a comment here from Erica. She is a fellow IU McKinney. She's a, a grad. She says, for the future law students, um, you get as much as you put in. I had an amazing experience because I was extremely involved. Being successful isn't just your grades, it's your ability to build connections. Yes. Seriously, where you go, um, it's going to be on who you know. And I, that was just so important. I know that if I came back to Indianapolis, I would have a set of network uh, individuals, uh, just how my network was built, that I could get a job and I really appreciated that. And um, my last job that I had um, before coming to Washington State was working for Jason Flora, who I talked about earlier today, uh, because of that connection. And because I had built good rapport with him and my, my casework, my legal work, um, and being able to work for a private firm that way, which is wonderful um, before moving here. Um, and I would have stayed there and worked for him as I loved it so much, but I need to move here to be with family. So what you put into law school, who you connect, who you meet, um, is going to be so important. Um, it also can, you have to manage out your first semester. I put a lot of work into networking, but I also, uh, felt that I didn't know what exactly what I was doing. So it's good to look at how many hours you're studying, make sure that, when you do meet people um, that you're following up, that you are getting their card and following up, emailing them and reminding you, them who you are so they can remember you. Um, get some uh, cards done. I know that the law school sometimes you can order them with their logo or you can just have them done your, uh, well, you can't infringe their copyright, but you can do your own um, uh cards and just have those ready to pass out with your email and your phone number um so people can know who you are um and how thank you for sharing your story answering my questions i truly appreciate it no problem so anybody else have any questions or suggestions about what to do in the summer before law school i, I can take that and take those um <clears throat> now we're getting back to uh what i was doing uh so I talked about being legal services. Then after that, I ended up, oh my gosh, it feels like, oh, working for Utah, Washington, D.C. So I highly suggest working in a different state besides your own. That is a very eye-opening opportunity, and it, it's something that I really enjoy doing. So I highly recommend doing that. Finding funding. Finding funding is really important. Finding funding and applying to all your law school scholarships applying to scholarships every day. I, I had a person who was just extremely organized um, and they would keep an Excel sheet 
with the scholarship dates the you know the website who's giving it what the qualifications are and they kept that uh, ongoing um uh, excel sheet updated where they have applied where they got rejected and that they needed to apply the following semester so important to keep that going and make sure that you're applying to as many resources as possible you have a drink of water here um excuse me all right so after i that I came back, continued working for Indiana Legal Services, and I graduated. Now, this is probably the tough part that I don't often like to talk about. I don't think anybody does, um, especially when you have a failure. So, after I took my last semester of, of law school, I had recently gotten married. I was uh, finally moved in with my husband um, in that uh, spring of 2018. And... I was working full time, taking classes full time. Hi, Olivia. She is a fellow IU McKinney grad. <laughs> uh, anyways, I um went ahead and uh was just uh t you know took on full time classes and, and work. And man, well, that was just really tough. Um, I was worn out. I mean, I did well that last semester. I was really proud for myself. Um. And then after that, uh, I was so worn out that I didn't really want to take the bar exam and I was financially fighting off poverty um, and even possibly, possibly be homeless because I didn't know how to pay rent and that was just really, really hard. Um, and even working full time, like law school, you know, we I paid for most of it with my family, my family, my parents. Like, they I had that support. A lot of students have that support, uh, and you know they 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 had uh, regular jobs like a lot of parents, but they put a lot of help into it, and it, it helped me a lot. And that was just really tough. I uh, TPS was ended as well, and whatever excuse I might have, the honest truth is I was so depressed and worn out. I didn't study as I I should have. Looking back now in retrospect. That was really tough, not passing the bar exam. So when you see my my, my signature is Cindy Alfaro, Cindy Petra Alfaro, JD. I'm not an Esquire yet, um, and that's okay. I know that one day soon I will be taking it. That I will work my butt off to pass it, and that I'm going to because I've seen so many women encourage me that I can and can do it. So, um, but in the meantime, I am enjoy working with Latin for Latina. Uh, working on some other ventures that I have um, and it's just been very interesting for sharing someone who's very creative of how much I can do and how I can defend myself legally in the sense of um, doing my own um, type of um, language and research and putting my own contracts together to release forms excuse me agreements that I have um, so and then I also follow Taylor because she gives amazing advice. Taylor Tainman, who I talk about all the time. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I really suggest um, finding ways to help yourself uh, while you're taking or you're taking the bar exam, talking to somebody about it, and making a good strong schedule and sticking to it, and and having that discipline even through difficult circumstances uh for for me it's just like that depression is kind of spiraled in the sense of what is going to happen my family could get deported at any time because president trump decided to end tip protect protective status so that was really hard anyhow i have a question for erica what person of your following do you believe are law students versus attorneys hmm that is a good question i should definitely take a poll sometime <laughs> i'm not sure I do think I do we have a lot of pre-law students and law students more so um, that are engaging with our page uh, than and then attorneys so I know that I think we have law students and pre-law students are majority of our audience we do have a lot of interactive attorneys and I really appreciate that because it gives opportunity to connect them with our law students and for them to engage in our page um, and it provides us with the content uh, and the tools to give back to the community. So I, I really appreciate that. Hello for Y me ALX. Hi, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, 
Mujeres Yena says, I failed my first time as well. I'll pass my second time around. You can do it. Yay! Yes, we can do it. I know that I can. I am, I'm really looking forward to being able to afford to take it. Um, so that's basically like something we didn't see with COVID-19. That's just been really financially a financial struggle for my family um even even including my parents who don't live with me they live by themselves and and my husband and I it's just been uh financially difficult and I hope that I can take it um within this coming year um the spring so that's my hope um and with taking the bar I'm not sure if I'll be practicing or working my my dream will be to work for a university or for a government entity so that I will see that. I have no sugar in my tea. Say lost in right here, 3L. Well, so thank you for sharing your story. It is inspiring and also a real struggle many Latinos go through. Yes. Oh my gosh. Just reading how many people can relate and that my story resonates, which is, it was really a relief. And then it sounds weird. And I mean that because it felt like I have a sisterhood. Um, it's just company that we're in this together that we're gonna get through this together, that we're gonna help our community rise and thrive. And I feel like we're in the solidarity together. So that's just been really helpful, just reading those stories. Oh, Erica said, I want to go to your parents' restaurant so bad. Yes, girl, you have to try it. If anyone knows, I always like to talk about my parents every once in a while, if you see my story. So my parents are just the one of the most hardworking people I know. I know in the community, that's our, our thing, right? strong work ethic and my parents are no exception they have a small restaurant in Evansville Indiana and they um, serve up food from nine different countries uh, which is pretty cool so El Salvador Mexico Argentina Venezuela Colombia um, Puerto Rico um, I'm trying to think Mexico they do have some fusion food some Caribbean food um, Dominican Republic and I'm trying to think Ecuador, which is pretty cool. So I think more than nine countries, but my mom is just a like amazing chef and she's, I mean, I think, I think I have like a dash of her, you know, we look at just alike and we think alike and we do a lot of cooking, but I don't know how I'm ever going to get my kids to say, your food is good as grandma, you know, <laughs> she's such a good cook. It puts me to shame sometimes, <laughs> so... Um, okay, someone said, uh, Yomara, a public notary and also attorney at law from, law firm from Puerto Rico, staying at home too. Yeah, yeah, please stay at home. Oh my gosh, last night I was just reading some stories that are very hard to read about the pandemic. I try not to talk about it too much, um, because it's just really difficult, um, to talk about it right now. Um, it puts a lot of people at stress. Um, so if you've probably seen I haven't said much about it. I know that you guys are well informed and if you're not, you should share link article in our stories. That's usually where I will post something. But stay home. Um, it's really scary. My parents are both high risk and they're still working and I'm worried about them all the time. It's a privilege for me to be able to do this from home while I'm still applying for jobs, while I'm still making moves and changes here and there. But my parents, you know, and, and like other people in our community are high risk. And especially if the person has um, respiratory problems or diabetes, um, which is what my parents have. So that's just really hard. Hey, Los Alvaros is just joined. <laughs> that's my parents' restaurant right there. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> so they're not open today, but they are um, open tomorrow. And they're not open Easter Sunday, but they'll be open on Tuesday. They're not open on Monday. So check them out. Uh, Rose Marin Villarini Esquire, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box. Uh, it looks like we have almost gone over, oh, we have gone over 30 minutes. So I'm gonna about to announce some of the people that will be joining us soon. Check out their Instagram. They're amazing ladies. Oh, I have a pre-law student say, I was wondering how you determine what area of law you wanted to practice. <laughs> Great question. Um, don't go into law school and, you know, if you, you know, you're you set on going to law school and choose what you want to do after you graduate. <laughs> um, I heard that's a good strategy for me. I already knew what I wanted to do, which is legislative law. That's the dream. I just really enjoy it. 
Um, and I, you don't have to choose what, what type of law you need to practice when you go into law school. Um, you can, you will take general classes. You can take the electives that you decide that you, that are interesting to you. Um, do something that you'll love. That's what I would say. Um, if you are able to afford, um, to do nonprofit, you know, if that's in your heart, do it. If you're able, want to do private law firm and make the big bucks, um, uh, and sometimes you don't make the big bucks, that's okay. Um, you'll, you'll still be in a good position and to work yourself up as well and do that if that's, you know, that's what you love. Um, and in retrospect, I think I probably would have gone into private firm. I, I really enjoy that, but I still would have done something in immigration. Uh, for, that's just for me. Um, I decided that because of how close it is to home and because I really enjoyed the legal aspect of it, the way of thinking that is required in putting that fact patterns together. So that was really important to me. And what I mean by that is analyzing a situation and saying, okay, I I feel comfortable enough to um, understand what's going on, understand the issue, and find a solution for it. Um, so just thinking through that. So if there's a, a something that you enjoy, I know that we're going to have uh, so an attorney with Trademark this week. So if you're going to listen in on that and see what that's about, I'm hoping to get some other attorneys um, to do our IG lives with me so that we can uh, kind of talk about what other fields there are, you know, for you to get a, get a good idea of what else you can do. Um, explore those, research them on, on Google and what uh, different fields you can go in. Um, you don't have to decide, like I said. So, yeah, I hope that it will be, um, that will be helpful to you that that um, you don't have to decide now and that it's okay if you graduate and you're still figuring that out and, uh, and you're applying for jobs and take the bar exam and you know I'm sure that you'll find your way on, as you're in law school and if you're not sure if law school is the right move for you um, that's okay too I, I didn't I was a pre-med student before I started applying for law school so that's completely okay so um, if you have questions though, and want to talk about it more one on one, uh, feel free to drop your email. Um, I don't usually give out my phone number on the live platforms. I didn't like this, but I have given it out to some law students so I could walk them through it. Just have a conversation about what you want to do and your goals. So you can do that there, um, and I can also connect you to other mentors if needed. So I have Karen Caspa here. Thanks for creating this platform for Latinas in law. Love cafecito time. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm about to announce the people who are um, going to be talking with us this, this week. I'm just so excited to be doing this. I'm usually camera shy, but I put makeup on today, so I feel a little bit more confident. <laughs> um, um, we're going to have, before you take the LSAT on Monday, so tune in for that. She will be talking about LSAT in law school. Uh, we'll be talking uh, to Olivia Ash Forty. And she is a fellow IU McKinney Law School um, graduate. We'll be talking about law and mental health. Then we'll, on Wednesday, we'll talk with Taylor Tiemann, who is a trademark attorney. So if you're interested in trademark law, that's something that we'll be talking about. Um, and how she, what is, what she's doing, how she's doing that. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to be going international and talking to someone in England. And we'll be comparing the UK versus the US law school systems. And after that, we'll be talking to a Latina RN official. I'm still confirming that we'll be talking about um, this particular topic. So I'll get back to you, but we'll be talking ma mainly about health and what's going on with the pandemic. So tune in for Cafecito Time. I'll, I'll be posting their bios as this uh, week in progress and throughout the week. I have a comment here. Absolutely, I thought I wanted to be a prosecutor or a defense attorney. And once I started working for the PD's office, I hated it. It's really best to be open if you don't know. It's totally okay. Yep, I completely agree. And then law school is a perfect time to explore your interests. Yes, it is. And you open up to a lot, a lot of windows and doors that you did not know you had access to. Um, 
and have oh thank you for dropping your email i don't know if it'll say on the video so can you make sure that you drop that email in my uh ex inbox um on instagram once we're done with the live session uh, what time is the time each day next week? It, every day it will, it's going to be a 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That would be for those who are in the middle of the country at 11 a.m. Sorry, 9 a.m. Sorry, 11 is going to be at 11 a.m. CSD Central Standard Time. And for those on the on the East Coast, it's going to be 12 p.m. your time. So 9 a.m. my time. Um, we have a three hour difference with New York. Uh, and a two hour difference with Indiana Midwest area. So um, check that out. Um, I'm going to be posting our schedule on our blog as well. And please make sure you check out our feature uh, Latina for today. That is Miss um, Maldonado, uh, Nadia Maldonado. She is pretty incredible. It's just the things that she's done and she's actually a child of migrant people uh, people and uh, workers and i just love reading her story she was just so inspirational so check that uh check that story out make sure you check out our store i always like to promote it uh and i know you have a large following our store is doing uh free shipping on 65 dollars and more i know that we will be um adding some new stuff as the the summer progress it starts coming in our way right now we have some really awesome hoodies so check that out and if you have any questions after this dm me we'll put the, this recording on our youtube and uh our instagram igtv so thank you so much for sticking with me i really appreciate it much love to all of you guys please stay uh, home stay safe and god bless and have an awesome day guys bye <laughs>